Uh, welcome to another edition of uh, My Life in Football. And as you can see, unfortunately, Steve not with us today. Uh, he's got other commitments elsewhere. But of course, joining me uh, today for this episode, of course, is the new secretary for uh, for Walthamstow. I'm the I'm, I'm football secretary and also secretary, secretary fixture yep. secretary, whatever title you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, a friend of mine as well in Adam Richardson. So Adam, uh, uh, you know, massive welcome to you to the show today. And uh, and in, in this, you know, I normally start off with a question: How did you sort of first get involved in 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 football? But we'll change this, the question a little bit. But I mean, how good is it to have uh, Walthamstow in step four? Uh, it's really, really good, actually. And um, on a personal point of view, I'm really excited for the challenge because uh, about, what was it, about nine years ago, I was with, or assisting with Barkingside when they got played from the ESL into the Isthmian League or Ryman League, as it was then. Personally, my, from a personal level, I don't think I was ready for the step up then. But now I am, and I'm really, really excited. I mean, the Southern League, it looks like a, a fantastic league. Uh, the teams we're going to face, obviously, we've got local ones, uh, um, new faces as well. Um, it's, it's, it's brilliant. Uh, for, for the club as well, um, Walthamstow have, as a club have never really been in step five. So they was there for eight years. And I'm really pleased for the whole club. Uh, like Andy Perkins, the chairman, uh, Steve, the vice chairman, uh, and Jay, who's Andy's son, Tony Brazier. They're a lovely, lovely club and they really deserve to be back at step four, which is where they should be. And I'm really looking forward to the challenge and I know the whole club is. And of course, uh, we'll, we'll go more into Walthamstow in a bit, but I mean, of course, you've got one of the best and the most knowledgeable managers in the game today. In uh, another good friend of mine, in Terry Spillane, and uh, who's who's an absolute yeah. dynamite uh, uh, gentleman. Uh, full stop. But I mean, Adam, with, with your career in in, in football and non-league football, I mean, how how did it all start for you? Well, we're, we're only going back. Uh, what should we go about thirteen to fourteen years? Because I'm actually only. I'm turning 30 uh, in August, so I, I'm a relative, still <laughs> relatively, uh, relatively newbie on the scene. Um, all started when I was 16 years old when I was actually um, studying for my GCSEs. And I was doing a little bit of, um, media is always interested in me, like the TV side, the radio side, which is part of the reason I got into doing the show, which I'll come on to in a bit. Um, but I was doing uh, GCSE media and I got involved with helping out with a local magazine in my area, Bethnal Green. It's, it doesn't continue anymore. It's called the Bethnal Green Directory. And I made a couple of good friends with that, uh, from that, and a couple I still speak to now. And basically, they wanted to get involved with any local community projects and things like that. And obviously, at the time, um, Bethnal Green United Football Club was our local team. They're now called Tower Hamlets. They were playing at Mile End Stadium and they were just being promoted up to their senior league. So I was asked to go down and do a little match report on them and just to have a, a pre-season game or something and just to have a look and see what it was all about. And obviously then from then on, I got talking to the uh, managers and the chairman and they, after a couple of games, they liked what I was doing. So I asked if I wanted to uh, come on board as some sort of a committee member, like a match reporter or something like that. So when I Here's me, spotty 16-year-old Oik, just left school. Uh, to, to start college, I'm going around watching Essex senior league games. And then, obviously, I got to know the ins and outs of the club a bit more. I started helping editing the programme and that. And then, when I turned 18, uh, I took the first team secretary role. And I haven't looked back since. So, I mean, we've we, we uh, Hamlets as well. I mean, how, how long was you with uh, Hamlets for? Uh, I was there from 2009 to 2018, so about nine seasons, nine to ten seasons, yeah. Favourite moments? Uh, well, there's, there's, def there's definitely quite a few. Um, uh, several off the top of my head. Obviously, the first season, we won the uh, Gordon Brasted Trophy and the Essex Senior League Cup double in our first season in senior football. That was fantastic. And we it's interesting, actually, because in a way, I feel like I've gone full circle because in the first two years, Bethnal Green were fighting for the ESL title with Stansted, who were managed by Terry Spillane. <laughs> so I've, I've literally known Terry from... And it's, it's mad I feel like I've gone full circle because I've known Terry from day one. And he said the battles we had were brilliant because we was a very, very good side. Stansted were an unbelievable side. And they, were, they had Dwight Gale in their team. Mm -hmm. And a uh, lovely boy he was as, as well. And he's deservedly gone on to great things. 
And yeah, the first two years were really, really exciting. The third year was uh, we had a fantastic FA Bars run. Um, we won our first two games, then we played our local rivals, Sporting Bengal, in the third round, beat them 5-2. And then uh, we went to Oxfordshire to play a team called Old Woodstock Town. Uh, and then we beat them 2-0. And then in the next round, we was the, when it went national. So we spent the weekend in Newcastle. We played a uh, Dunstan, who actually won the bars that year. And we went up there. The first game got called off because of the snow, because it was awful weather. And then the second game, we went up there, stayed in a hotel for a weekend. We lost 3-0, but, you know, I couldn't have been more proud of the team, but it was bittersweet, because you might remember this, uh, Dave. Um, just after that, Justin Gardner, our manager, left us to go to Avery, um, which uh, which I think, because Avery were really struggling at the time, they were bottom of the Ryman Premier, and they brought him in. He couldn't keep them up. Um, but he went there, and it was, yeah... Uh, um, that absolutely great moments. Um, we went through a little bit of turbulence as a club uh, for a couple of years. I'll, I'll admit that. Uh, but we came out the other side stronger than ever. Our reserves won the Essex Senior League Reserve Shield in the face of adversity. And that was absolutely fantastic. Um, and one thing I'm really proud of, of, of Tower Hamlets is the fact that we brought through a lot of young players that have gone on to do good things. A classic example, um, Randell Williams. Uh, he was at us about five years ago. He was playing our reserves. He went to our first team. He's now playing for Hull City in the Championship. And he was one of the best players in League Two with Exeter the other year, uh, the season with the pandemic. And that's one thing I'm really, really proud of to mm. see one of our players progressing uh, that high. And hopefully there'll be a lot more to come because there's been other players that have gone on and done so well. Mm. I mean, I mean, with that though, I mean, with Tower Hamlets, I mean, was you shocked to see, you know, with their ground move as well? Of course, because they've been moved into uh, into different league as well. Yeah, um, there were reasons, uh, from what I understand, behind the reason they moved. It's not my place to say, obviously, because mm. I wasn't with the club, but I still speak to the club and speak to the chairman quite often. There were reasons why they had to do it, but unfortunately for them, um, they... I, th I think COVID hit at the wrong time for them because all I'll say is if things have been different or things have worked out a slightly different before lockdown hit, it might have ended up a little bit different for them. But I'm pleased they're now back at Mile End. I am pleased they're back, even if it is step six, they're back home. And I think it's what the club needs. They need to be back at home in their borough, playing home games all the way in Dartford when you're from Tower Hamlets is... Is extremely hard. Mm. Mm. I mean, I mean, you're talking about Ju Justin as well, of course. I mean, Justin, one of the best managers. And what a miss he is at the moment to, uh, you know, you know, to step three, step four football. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I was really gutted that uh, he left Barking. Um, I do think I'll be honest with you. I do think if he had stayed at Barking, they might have got out of the situation. They were in. That's no disrespect to Barking Football Club. I've got a lot of time for them. They're a lovely little club, fantastic little club. Um, but Justin's got the know-how, as you know, Dave, to you know do well in step four. So I was I was a bit disappointed. He'll get another job sooner or later. He will. So what? Any any other memorable games that you can you you, you know you can think of? But uh, you know when he was there at uh, Tams, other than that sort of little Vars run. I mean, was there? Some you know some good games at the end of the you know end, end of your time time now. Yes, uh, in the final season we started off on an absolute train, but we did fell away. We played um, in the FA bars against Little Oakley, and it was Little Oakley's FA bars debut. And uh, no disrespect to them, it is one they'll never forget because we beat them ten one. We was like six and up in half an hour. Honestly, it was one of the most craziest games I've ever seen. And um, from then we went on. We went on a really good run that year. And just a shame we lost a couple of players and we fell away. But um, other good memories as well was good atmospheres when the Claps and Ultras used to come to us. We had a good Friday night attempt at six hundred over there at Mile End on a Friday night. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic memories. Um, if you want to talk about funny memories and, and stories, this there's one that actually made the national press. Um, because uh, Haringey's Tom Loizou mentioned this uh, a couple of times. 
what happened was uh, we were playing Harrogate Borough on the last day of the season, and we had nothing to play for. They were they'd already won the league, and due to circumstance, we had a manager t- uh, for the last couple of games. And what happened was I sent him all the confirmation, sent him everything. I was there on time, two o'clock. I'm like, where the hell are this lot? So I phoned, oh, we're on our way, we're on our way. Yeah. So I sent him the, he said, resend me the address again. So I did. And I see, you know where Haringey Borough's ground is. Haringey Borough, Coles Park, White Hart Lane. He's read it as Haringey Borough, White Hart Lane. He's end up at Spurs' ground, thinking they're playing there. Oh, yeah. Then he turns up at five to three. And he asks the referee, can we warm up? He's like, no, you should have gone to Scotland's ground. <laughs> <laughs> and literally, honestly, when he got to 7 0, the manager, the interim caretaker manager, just got up and walked off and left me in the dugout. I'm like, right, okay, what have I got to do here? We, we lost 12 0. I'm like, <laughs> it was, it, honestly, I managed to cu- help manage a couple of games here and there, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go into it full time. It's too much, too much, too much headache, <laughs> too much hassle. But I mean, when you when you were there, though, I mean, when, when was it? You was was it while you were there that you set up? You course your uh, grassroots football show. Yes, uh, I set that up. Uh, we're going to just trying to work this out. Yes. We're going to eighth season now, seventh full, but eighth overall, and we set that up in January 2015, and. Uh, it all came about when uh, basically East London Radio were advertising for a couple of people and they wanted a couple of contributors for their sports programme. So I had one down. I thought I can lend my note to this senior league and the local team. So that's what I did uh, on the ELR sports show with Steve Porter and Charlie Rowe. And I lent my uh, expertise to the league over. And then they liked it so much what I was doing, they decided they wanted to do a show, a non-league kind of grassroots show for the local teams. So that's when it started uh, from there in fishing 2015. So I said, oh, I've been there for about eight years now. And the show from then has just gone from strength to strength to strength to strength. We started with about 20 people listening. We're getting like 300, 400 every week now. And I'm, I'm happy with that. It's fantastic. Mm. Yes, through COVID, we kept the show going. Yes, obviously, <laughs> With the loss of the studio, we're having to do it like we're doing it through Zoom. And that presents its own challenges. However, uh, I'm still really enjoying it. And it's, it's fantastic. And I've got to pay tribute to Pete. Pete Dudley is my co-host. Um, yeah, Pete, bless him. He's been been through a lot recently, bless him. And I hope he won't mind me saying that. Uh, but I couldn't have done that show without him. He's literally been a rock to me into the programme. He's been superb. Mm-hmm. And... He helped make that show, and I really do owe a lot to him. And yeah, I, may I, continue. I, think I, I think whenever I, I, I watch it and, and listen to it, he, he comes across as almost like the general. Do you know what I mean? You know, the, you know, and and I know he's as you just said, he's been going through a tough time lately. And but you know, for mm. me, I mean, you know, his, his knowledge of, of that sort of step level is he's fantastic. And I, I must admit, I thoroughly enjoy listening to you know his knowledge of of football at that level because you know, as I said, sometimes it's a case of not necessarily knowing a little bit about this team or that team, and he comes in with some fantastic knowledge. Um, you know, with, with yourself on the show, so uh, you know, big heads up to him because I think he's he, he does a great job as well as yourself. He, he does, and I must, uh, and I'm not just saying this. I must say, we've got to pay tribute to you and, and Keith as well because, um, in a way, uh, in a way, we do the same thing. We do different steps, but you inspire us to do better on our show, sort of thing. Because obviously. Um, we used to cover step three, step four a little bit. And then obviously we realised that, um, and obviously I'm in mean, as nice nicest way possible. Everyone wasn't listening to us for the interview information. They were going to you and Keith. And so we thought, okay, well, um, Dave and Keith do a fantastic show anyway. So we'll just leave them to do step three and step four because their, show, their shows are rip roaring success and the clubs love that. We'll just step back and do, cover what we know and, and and let you guys do obviously do the three and four and and, uh, and it's a it's a it's a testament to you and Keith because your show is absolutely fantastic. The amount of great people you get on that show. I I, mean, I envy you the guests you get sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you, when you actually look at some of the you know the guests that you've had on though, I mean, I mean, who's some of your favourite guests that you've had on and some funny moments you know on you know on your show? 
Um, oh, there's been plenty. Um, one guest that would always stick out to me, um, and it was about this time last year, actually, and it would always stick out to me because just three or four months later, he was gone, Gordon and Boateng. Mm. And we had him on the round end of May to June last year. And even now, I'm just lost for words. He was talking so excited about his new venture with Hartford United. And what he had planned and everything like that. And he looked so happy. And he looked, you wouldn't have, mm. if someone had said to me that was going to happen, you would have thought they were mad. He was yeah, still mad. Mm. And to hear of what happened to him was devastating. He was a really good bloke. And he, and he was so supportive of myself and Pete. He was so supportive of the show. And he will be greatly missed. And Okay. it's just mad he was on the show in June and then October yeah yeah it's just I mean, it's I mean, just my, crazy my daughter was do, was was the photographer for the club and you know and it was it was yeah it was absolutely devastating such a as you said just a gentle giant do you know what I mean a guy that you used to look at and he was sort of like uh, all in sort of bodybuilder American wrestler type size wasn't he and he and you know and he was he was, mm. he was such a gentle giant such a lovely bloke do anything for anybody and as you say to see him one minute he's he's doing your show he did something for us as well and then the next minute yeah. you know he's, he's no longer here he's uh, you know he it was 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 awful but any any funny bits you've had on your show oh god there's been um <coughs> uh, there's been absolute uh, hilarious we used to do a, a segment with um with Woodford Town coach Neil Day called the weekly Wadham and we used to do our thing uh, we're taking um, his little heart like heart look at um, Wadham Lodge football club he used to do like little cartoons and that so we used to do, include us, but some of them were blooming hilarious. Um, other interesting moments, obviously. Um, there's been a couple of um, of mistakes on air where you just uh, say the you you come out with your blooper, like for example. Um, <laughs> uh, I actually said I said the best result. I said the breast result, and I was like, <laughs> I, was like oh, I got absolutely slaughtered for that. Yeah. And yeah, so um, and there was a player that played for Clapton. He was called Paul Oshin. And by accident, because I was rushing through time, I said Pooh Oshin by accident. <laughs> so there's been some there's been some um, some bloopers. Um, I think one of the funniest bits we had a groundhopper, um, well-known groundhopper on our show, Richard Brock, and uh, we was uh, doing showers, and my cousin had just released her first single. Um, and so we played that on the show and I was giving a shout out to my family and, um, and I accidentally announced, <laughs> accidentally said that my cousin's dog was the DJ <laughs> to that song. I don't know how that happened, but it was just a complete, and then we started, we, we started going for all the silly like puns that you do, what, DJ dog names and songs that dogs sing and think it was just mental. It was just, um, yeah, I've had some really, really, um, Great people and great uh, from all the clubs that have come on. And it's, it's, it's been, honestly, absolutely fantastic. One uh, interview that will always stand out for me is um, ELR Sport with Steve and Charlie. Uh, when was it? About five years, or four or five? Four, four or five? Yeah, four or five years ago. And Steve and Charlie couldn't make it one day, but they had, they had a very important interview. Um, Pensacola did. And they entrusted us to take the interview is with a man called Kent Teague, who is the director of Lake Norim. And he just came in when obviously Oren got took over and they got relegated to the National League. And he came in and he had all the time in the world for us, a really, really nice bloke. He, he even offered to take us up west for dinner afterwards, but couldn't we had to stay and do our show. So mm. that was absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's, and it's people like that, that make it, you know, enjoyment. But I mean, you also, of course, as well, managed to get onto something that I've always wanted to do. So I'm very envious of you in this in this thing. You managed to get onto the, uh, you know, the Essex uh, Senior League board. I mean, how, you know, how did that come about? And, and talk, talk to us about that. Well, um, I was on the development committee uh, the, the year before I left Tower Hamlets fully, um, just helping out with certain things. They had done a kick it out project, which was fantastic. I, I'm really, really good. A kick it out day where you um, invite local kids down. And ELR got involved with, you give out raffle bags. And I did a bit of refereeing 
uh, which was um, fantastic. I had to send one of the uh, spectators off with a red card, the league secretary, for constant misconduct. I had to send her off. And then, obviously, I was invited that to... Is that by any chance? Yes. Yeah, so I had to give her a red card. <laughs> mm. for, for constant criticising of my referee. I was like, <laughs> no, no, I'm trying to referee it. Yeah. I'm trying to concentrate, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, so they, they, they've done things like that. Obviously, then I was helping out with the league, uh, obviously full-time with social media and, and, and things like that. And uh, so, yeah, I was there for three years. And, yeah, it was... It was um, I, I enjoyed the... I enjoyed it. Um, I left there at the end of season 2020, 20, 2021. Uh, won't go into full details of, of what happened. Uh, I don't really want to go into politics and things like that, but all I'll just say is I'm, even to this day, I'm still, um, how shall I put it? Uh, it still, it still hurts, hurts a little bit, but obviously the way things happened and things could have been dealt with and handled a lot better, I think, with certain things, but obviously I won't go into that. No. But, um, <laughs> I, but I will appreciate that, always appreciate the league for, for the opportunity. But it did actually make me realise as well that um, I actually missed the club side of things more. So when I got the offer in from Walthamstow, uh, where Max Mitchell, who was director of football time, and Andy Perkins contacted me, it was a no-brainer. I put my announcement up, but I'd left. And literally within 24 hours, my phone was buzzing left by dead. And then Walthamstow came in literally 24 hours later. So... And that meant a lot to me because it really made me feel like, yeah, I am still wanted in football. Yeah, I am someone actually does want me to do a job. Mm. So, and I met up with the chairman a week after, and then yeah, it, and then I haven't I haven't looked back with Wolfenstow since. Mm. So, I mean, with Wolfenstow, I mean, you know, they're now a proud sub league club as from well, as from now. Of course, the AGM was a few weeks ago, and I mean, what what are you looking forward to? Is there any trips you're looking forward to? And you know. Um, yeah, I actually am. I'm, I'm looking forward to all of it, to be honest. It'd be nice to come back up to Harlow. I haven't been there for a while. I've got bad memories of Harlow because um, I haven't played there a, few, a couple of times in the FA Cup. And in fact, every time I've been to Harlow, I've been absolutely slaughtered. Whether it was FA Cup or Enfield playing the end of the league. <coughs> and I remember with Barkingside, Barkingside lost their 8-2 or something. Yeah. Yeah, so I think... I think the minimum I've ever conceded on that ground being there is four. <laughs> so it's not a very good happy hunting ground, Harlow, for me personally. So I'm 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 considering staying clear because I might I might be, I might jinx it. Um, no, but obviously the 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 new clubs, um, places like Kidlington, uh, Simon Sester, Highworth. So I'm looking forward to all them. The nice new long trips, different places, different part of the country. Yeah. I mean, I mean, with it though, talk us through Barking, you know, uh, so Walthamstow's, um, you know, promotion. I mean, talk, talk to talk to us a little bit about last season and uh, some of the games and 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 how it went. Yeah, well, um, we started off last season on uh, I think it's like the fifth of August or so against White Enzyme. We was two 0 down and we come back to win five two. <laughs> and when we was two 0 down, the team finally woke up and we're thinking, right, well, okay, here we go. And uh, then we we just we just motored on. We done brilliantly in the FA Cup, um, and then uh, we've got some early early good victories. Our first defeat the season was our against our title rival Saffron Ward, and we lost to them. Uh, then obviously we, we drew a blank against uh, who was it White Enzyme, and then we we plugged along. We had a good FA Cup run. We lost to Hornchurch uh, eventually in the second qualifying round by four goals to one. That was. Um, a shame, really, because that was a game we felt we could have gone and won. Um, and then, then after that, uh, went into obviously the winter months. The winter months are a bit stagnating for us because when I'm when I'm stagnated, we did stagnate a little bit around January, February time, but we also picked up some great results against the sides directly behind us on the table, like Redbridge and Enfield. And who um, were literally, basically, whose child challenges we effectively killed off. Stansted, we drew nil nil with them, and then the longer we were getting towards the finishing line, we were stagnant, getting draws here and there, lost a couple of games, and yeah, it, 
we managed to get there eventually. We, um, to middle of March, we kicked into gear and then we won the title uh, without kicking a ball where Stansted, we, we beat Woodford 4-0 on a Friday night. And Stansted uh, lost on the Saturday and the Tuesday to Clapton and Redbridge respectively. And that won us the title without kicking a ball. And the last two games at home were just like some one massive party. <laughs> I mean, would, did you find that the pressure was on a little bit though? Because... I mean, everybody was sort of looking at Wolf and Stowe in that league, thinking, well, you're going to win it quite comfortably. I mean, well, you know, what, <laughs> but you know what I'm yeah. trying to say during the season, though, was it was it difficult because everybody that, that pressure was on the likes of Terry and his team, you know, from, right from the beginning. It wasn't a sort of an easy sort of run in. It, it was one of those ones where everybody expected Wolf and Stowe to get promoted. So, I mean, what did you see around the club? Was it a little bit anxious at the beginning of the season? I think there will be people around the club, um, and I'll admit it myself. There are one or two moments I was thinking, "Uh oh, we're in, are we in a bit of trouble here?" Like, you you know, you're probably going to do it, but there's always that thought in the back of your mind, even though you would like to admit it. But yeah, there was a little bit of anxiety, but I had heavy faith in Terry and John. Uh, obviously, John Mackey is well, fantastic bloke. Um, we we got mentioning because he was East Terry's co-manager and. Top bloke, ex Orient. He knows. He knows what he's doing. Um, yeah, there was a little bit of. I know people wouldn't want to admit it, but I think there was a little bit of nervousness here and there, but not not overly. It was. It, it was one. Of, do you know what it is, Dave? I think. I think, and I don't. I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, but I think it was one of those. Is that there's that saying in football, isn't it? Your worst opponent, your hardest opponent, is yourself. If, it, if it, you can only get beat by yourself, sometimes there were one or two occasions it may have looked like that. But you know what? The team were fantastic. I can't fault them. Fantastic. I mean, t- team wise, going into this into this season, I mean, uh, you know, how, how are you feeling? It's coming together because you, you've lost your, your main man, Mr. Hallett. I mean, you know, do you feel the team is you know the team sort of coming together well? Yes, and I feel that. Do you know what? I've got no worries at all because um, we've got obviously two great co-managers. John Mackey's a man I've got a lot of time for. Um, his knowledge and his and what he's been through in his career is is fan is fantastic. Um, uh, like I remember what, going up as a teenager watching John. I remember seeing like Frank Park actually um, when Portsmouth played Reading um, in two thousand and three. And then, obviously, I remember when he won the League Two. No, no, when, 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 didn't win the title. Won promotion from League Two with Leighton Orient in 06. I remember that very, very well. And um, so he's someone that's always stuck out for me as a, as, as a player. And it's great to work with him. Um, and as I say, he knows a lot of people in football. And so does Terry. Terry, as you know, is very knowledgeable at this level. And he knows people. He knows players. He knows teams. He knows clubs. He knows he's got a very good knowledge of this level. So that, those two, well, that will help us going forward. I've got no worries at all because we're in very, very, very safe hands at step four with, with Terry and John. Very safe hands. They know what they're doing. And if it gets, and with the support as well, things get a bit, we, we go, get, go through a little bit of a bad patch at some point, a dodgy patch, the support will still be there. Terry and John will know how to get us out of it. And mm. I've got every faith in that we will have a very successful season. So, with with your faith, where do you reckon you're going to finish? Oh God, you're going to put that on me now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Is it one of those things that Terry says? Look, you know, uh, you know, I don't want to finish in as long as we finish, don't finish in the bottom two, three. Is it something that you think? <laughs> if I know if I know Terry very well, and and probably John Mackey, they'll probably want to be finishing up around the playoffs, aren't they? <laughs> You know, well, you took the words right out of my mouth. Um, <laughs> um, the, knowing Terry and John and one or two other people in the club, they're going to be burning. Oh, we can go for it this year. There's no reason why we can't. And I'm with them. I will be happy. Do you know what? I'm more 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 relaxed. I'm happy to be there, consolidate first season, and see where see where it takes and see where we need to improve and so on. But if we get playoffs and the title, I will ta- I'll happily take that. <laughs> I'll happily take that. But from personal level, I'm happy to just consolidate. If it happens, it happens. I'll be delighted. But I know Terry and John and the others will be burning deep down inside to get that, um, get up at least around the top five, top six. <laughs> so, so what we, so what we're hoping for this season. So we're hoping for a Wolfram Stowe promotion. 
Portsmouth promotion and a Southampton relegation. Would that be nice? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think all three is going to happen. Right, let's, uh, let's, be, let's be honest. Let's be honest about, um, about that. Considering Southampton have just nicked our goalkeeper from last season as well. We're, yeah. Not okay. good. <laughs> Not good at all. I, I mean, but, when, Tom. God, I was going to say, where's so the show? I mean, when, when, when does your show come back? And you know, and if people are, uh, you know, watching the interview, you, you know, uh, where can they where can they listen to it? Uh, I mean, when you know, what does the show t- tell people about the overall of, of your show and what uh, you know what what you talk about, when it's going to be, times, etc. Okay, well, the show is called the Grassroots Football Show. It's on East London Radio. It's every Thursday from seven pm to nine pm. Uh, or 9.30, depending on what we've got to talk about. Um, you can listen to it at eastlondonradio.org.uk or any of these uh, radio app things that you get, like TuneIn or Radio Player or, or one of them things. But they, they, they usually have it on there. Or you can uh, say by the website. Uh, we just talk about all the uh, local football from step five and six, so basically local, locally, like the Essex Senior League and the Eastern Senior League, South, also known as the Third Line, London Division One South, or wherever it's called this week. Um, the Essex Alliance League, who are our main partners, we attend their cup finals every year. We have a, a good league and local Sunday football as well um, in the Essex Corinthian and the Essex Sunday combination. So we talk about um, all that. We have guests on every week. Format might tweak a little bit next year. So obviously we're, we're now in the, the cloud and the Zoom sphere of it because obviously our studio, unfortunately... Uh, my producer Ian, what I'm saying this, unfortunately, we we had to leave our studio because of the spiraling costs and everything. So we 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 having to do it like what mm. we're doing now on Zoom. Mm. Do, do it on Zoom, yeah. And that, and that's a shame, I think, isn't it? When you lose your studio, we we you know we had the same thing with ours when we was on Hawks Radio. We lost this, we lost the studio as well. And went over to doing it sort of in, in different bits and bobs, but you know, and he was told that Zoom and stuff like that was wasn't very good and now everybody's using zoom so it, it works quite well i think in the end i think two and a half years ago no one ever heard of zoom <laughs> no one ever heard of it but now it's like literally it's it's, it's it's literally you do everything by zoom now zoom calls zoom dates um which are obviously me and the missus have had to, had to do during lockdown um zoom games nights and things like that so yeah. it's, it's all zoom no. now isn't it no, absolutely. Zooming teams. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, mate. It's been, it's been a fantastic new season, though. Yeah, it's been fantastic chat. Look forward to seeing what Wolf and Stowe do in the uh, in the in the coming season, and also what uh, happens with yourself with the grassroots football show as well. And wish you all the very very best with that. And uh, and of course, we'll get you on the show at some point as well, and uh, have a chat with yourself and Terry and the rest of the guys at uh, at Wolf and Stowe. But a massive thank you for for joining us for your life in football. We'll be back next week when we uh, hopefully we will have the Eddie, the manager from Northley, will be joining us on next week's show but until then from myself and from adam good night